Telomere attrition refers to the progressive shortening of telomeres, the protective caps at the ends of chromosomes with each cell division. Telomeres consist of repeated DNA sequences that do not encode specific genes. These sequences serve as a buffer or protective region that prevents the essential coding DNA sequences in the chromosome from being eroded during replication. With each division, telomeres naturally shorten because DNA polymerase, the enzyme responsible for replicating DNA, cannot fully copy the very end of the linear DNA molecule. This phenomenon is known as end replication problem. As a result, a small portion of the telomere is not copied, leading to telomere shortening. This brings us neatly back to the Hayflick limit. In most somatic cells, the ones which make up the majority of the body and are responsible for its everyday functions, this process of telomere shortening continues with each cell division. When telomeres become critically short, a cell reaches the Hayflick limit, the maximum number of divisions it can undergo. At this point, the cell enters a state of senescence where it remains metabolically active but no longer divides. In certain cases, it may undergo apoptosis, programmed cell death. Both outcomes contribute to the loss of cells of each division, ultimately leading to DNA loss. Over time, as cells in various tissues reach the Hayflick limit and are lost, tissues can show signs of aging and reduced regenerative capacity. This is particularly evident in tissues with a high rate of cell turnover, such as the skin and the lining of the digestive tract. Now the obvious solution to this would be to simply lengthen the telomeres. However, that does not come without its drawbacks. It is theorized that one of the reasons why telomeres degrade and appear to have this inbuilt lifespan via the Hayflick limit is to stop cells from dividing uncontrollably. In fact, one of the way cancers become malignant is by bypassing the normal restriction cells have on cell division. They do this by upregulating an enzyme known as telomerase. Telomerase is capable of maintaining the length of telomeres by addition of guanine-rich repetitive sequences. Telomerase is a ribonucleoprotein, which means it consists of both protein and RNA components. The protein component, called telomerase reverse transcriptase, or TERT, functions as the enzymatic component, and the RNA component is known as telomerase RNA, or TR. TR contains a template sequence that is complementary to the telomic repeat sequence, for example, TTAGGG in humans. Telomerase binds to the telomere ends, positioning the RNA template near the free prime overhanging end of the telomere. Using the RNA template as a guide, the TERT component of telomerase synthesizes a complementary DNA strand onto the free prime overhang of the telomere. This extension effectively lengthens the telomere. After adding a telomeric repeat, telomerase translocates to a new position on the telomere and repeats the process. This allows the enzyme to continuously add multiple repeats to the telomere, preventing its shortening. However, there is a major caveat to everything I have just said. I can already hear people typing in the comments below, so just holster your fingers for a moment. The Hayflick limit found that each cell was only capable of around 40 to 60 cell divisions each. If that's the case, then we would expect humans to only live for a few years at most before our cells reached the Hayflick limit and we aged out and died. Yet clearly that's not what's happening. If you're watching this video, then I hope you're at least a little bit older than free. The Hayflick limit is observed in cells outside the body or in vitro and seems to be a simplified model that doesn't necessarily reflect the behavior of cells in a living organism in vivo. Cells in the human body don't appear to have a predetermined fixed number of divisions after which they suddenly stop functioning. So clearly something else has to be going on here. In the human body, Various mechanisms and factors, such as tissue-specific stem cells, control cell division and tissue regeneration. These mechanisms allow for the continuous replacement of damaged or aging cells. 
Different types of somatic cells have different lifespans and capacities for division depending on their function and location in the body. Shortened telomeres can trigger cell cycle arrest and lead to senescence or apoptosis. However, some cell types, like germ cells and certain stem cells, have mechanisms to maintain or even lengthen their telomeres, allowing for extended cell division. You see, it's not just tumorigenic cells that exhibit telomerase. Telomerase can also be found in both gametes and stem cells, and this is a topic that will be covered further when we get to hallmark 8, stem cell exhaustion. For now, however, what's important to note is that these stem cell lines also contain telomeres. Even with the enzyme telomerase, the telomeres of these stem cells become critically short, affecting their regenerative ability, leading to a decline in tissue maintenance and repair in aging individuals. Now, biological age and chronological age are not the same thing. It's why you see people who have looked after their health, and usually have a lot of money, look fantastic for their age. Meanwhile, someone who has smoked and drunk heavily can look decades older than their chronological age. It has been noted in multiple research articles that individuals with shorter telomeres are more likely to develop various age-related diseases, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and neurodegenerative conditions. Telomeres have to be kept at an optimum length. If they become too short, cell cycle arrest occurs. If they are too long, the risk of cancer becomes too great. There are a few biotech companies currently researching telomerase as a form of gene therapy. However, it is a delicate balancing act that has to be played. Telomerase is absent in normal cells of the body, but present in around 95% of all types of human cancers. There is certainly the potential to use this enzyme in anti-aging therapies, but we have to be careful not to induce cancer. I mean, if we're trying to get biological immortality, then that's like the opposite effect of what we're looking for.